Let's talk about hidden condition number two. And hidden condition number two is candida. Candida is another digestive ailment that can plague people with IBD, but it's not talked about in the traditional medical circles. Your doctor is not testing for it, and it might be hindering your recovery, even if you're doing everything right. Let's start by talking about what is it, just in case you haven't heard of candida before. Candida is a condition where there's too much yeast in the digestive tract. So this is different from SIBO and where that's a case of too much, too much bacteria in the small intestine. So this is too much yeast. Symptom differences between the two, between SIBO and candida, they might be subtle. But treatment options are very different. So that's why it's important that you're able to distinguish between the two before your doctor decides what to do about it. Candida is short for Candida albicans fungus, and it's the most common yeast that's found in the digestive tract. But this yeast can grow out of control, especially when there isn't enough good bacteria already in our GI tract. And so the yeast grows and it creates dysbiosis or an imbalance in our intestines. Many people can be at risk for candida. So people who overuse antibiotics would be at greater risk. People with diabetes, people with autoimmune conditions, especially gastrointestinal conditions, they are also at greater risk for candida, so people with Crohn's, people with colitis, people who are on a high sugar or high carbohydrate diet, they are also at higher risk, as well as people who live in chronic levels of high stress. Is any of this sounding familiar to you? Candida is much more common than we realize. And it may be the underlying condition that's keeping you from IBD remission even though you're doing everything right. Now, what are some symptoms of candida? Let's take this a little bit deeper here and actually talk about symptoms. There are several signs that you may have candida or an overgrowth of yeast in your digestive system. I'll tell you about the ones that I see most often when I work with people who have Crohn's and colitis. And those would be things like oral thrush or those white spots, it's like a coating on your tongue, a coating of white on your tongue. Those who have current recurrent yeast infections, they might be more prone to candida. People who experience strong sugar cravings, that is a good sign that candida might be present. Brain fog and digestive challenges like bloating, diarrhea, constipation, those are signs that you may have candida. Those with fungal infections on their nails or their toenails, that's another symptom of candida. Also, people who have excessive anxiety or panic attacks, that could also be a symptom of candida. Now, of course, just because you have anxiety doesn't mean you have candida, but it's when we then put the whole picture together, put all of those puzzle pieces together, if anxiety is present as well, that can be a piece of the puzzle. And why don't you know? Why don't you know that you have candida even if you have these symptoms? Of course, you don't know that you have it for the same reasons you don't know that you have SIBO. They are just way too similar to our Crohn's and colitis symptoms. Doctors just aren't looking for it. And if we are following a path of proper eating, proper supplementation and taking our medications, and we're following mindfulness practices that work to reduce our stress and to help with the demands of our life, and we're still not getting any better, it can leave us feeling defeated and uncertain about our future. This is why I'm just so passionate about making sure that you know about these conditions. Knowledge is key here. So how do you know then? How do we test for candida? Well, practitioners who test for candida, they often start by looking at your symptoms. When a combination of symptoms like the ones that I just mentioned, when they come up to a knowledgeable candida practitioner, they might want to dive deeper with testing. 
And the gold standard for candida testing is a two to three day stool test and it looks at the DNA of the pathogens in your poop. And I have to mention as well, and I know this is a controversial and it's clearly anecdotal. It doesn't have any scientific evidence behind it, but I have seen people start with a simple home spit test for candida. And the spit test involves spitting into a cup of water first thing in the morning. Oftentimes people will start here because they don't have a provider that they can go to who knows about candida. So although I don't have the research to back it up, to back up the validity of the spit test, I have seen clients try this first with a spit test, with it coming up positive, and then later having a stool test that will then confirm that they are positive for candida. But it's about putting those puzzle pieces together when it comes to this condition. Looking at your symptoms, getting a stool test if it's possible, talking to your doctor, somebody who's knowledgeable about the condition. All of those things are key in getting a proper diagnosis. So what do you do if you suspect you have candida? What if candida is the thing that's holding you back? The best place to start, of course, is by talking to your doctor. You never know unless you bring it up. I mean, I do see a lot of the times that doctors aren't willing to talk about it or they don't know about it, but how do you know unless you ask? So talk to your doctor about candida and these other conditions we're talking about today. And if you don't find satisfaction there, remember that there are nutritionists and there are functional medicine providers who do know about candida. Don't stop your search just because the first place you go you didn't find satisfaction. Continue searching for someone who can help you. And when you get proper testing for candida, you might also want to get tested for SIBO at the same time since both of these conditions, they can present so similarly. So let's just say you've been tested, you know you have candida, now what? What do you do? Well, every provider's approach in treating candida is a little bit different, but I'd like to give you some general guidelines about the approaches that I see most practitioners taking when it comes to candida. So there's several supplements that can be helpful to get rid of extra yeast. Antifungals like oil of oregano, caprylic acid, allicin, that's a compound found in garlic. There's lots of different herbal antifungals out there. There's even combination antifungal supplements that might be part of your healing regime. Although I do, know, as you see that some people with Crohn's and colitis, they tend to be sensitive to the multi-strain antifungals. They can just be a little bit too powerful. So just be careful there. Probiotics. Probiotics are used to treat candida after some healing has taken place, but none of these supplements will be helpful for you unless they're combined with a dietary change as well. And if you're in the category of doing everything right for your IBD, you're probably already eating a diet that is healthy for you, but you might want to just make some tweaks to tailor it to getting rid of your candida. The low FODMAP diet is really good for this condition. I will go ahead and link to my favorite low FODMAP website in the show notes so that you can get more information about low FODMAPs, what's allowed on the diet, what isn't, what's allowed in moderation. It's a great website, so I'll link to that in the show notes. Generally speaking, though, you're looking for a diet that's low in sugar, low in carbohydrates, and that doesn't include gluten or dairy. That's preferred when candida is present. And I have to say bone broth, or as you know, I like, if you listen to this podcast, even better, meat stock. Uh, that's my preference, but that can be really helpful as well when you're trying to control candida, as well as including high quality fats in your diet, especially coconut oil, because that has that caprylic acid that I mentioned earlier as a supplement. Coconut oil has that. And there's also some other oils that are great, good quality fats that can help with candida. And those would be oils like extra virgin olive oil, walnut oil, avocado oil. Herbal tea is also helpful when it comes to candida. Herbal teas like ginger, peppermint, and pau de arco. Those teas can be great as well as 
black tea. I want to mention that one as well because the tannins in the tea, they can help control candida overgrowth. When it comes to candida and diet, I just want to mention one last thing about sugar. I think it's important to mention. So it's important for you to limit your sugar, but I don't think it's a good idea for you to get rid of sugar completely because when you do that, that can actually exacerbate the candida. But it is important to focus on small amounts of natural sugars when candida is present. So those would be things like honey and maple syrup. I really like those. Again, small amounts, but we don't need to get rid of it completely, just in small, small doses. Okay, that's candida, hidden condition number two. And hopefully, hopefully some of the information that I gave you, it's just going to kind of get the wheels turning for you, give you something to think about and get you moving along the right path if you're doing everything right, but you're still not feeling better. This has been an excerpt from the Cheeky Podcast for Moms with IBD, episode 30. It's just a snippet from what we talked about on the episode. And if you're a mom with Crohn's or colitis and you found this information valuable and you want to hear more, you can hear the whole episode. The link is in the comments. If you're not a podcast junkie like me and you'd rather get your gut loving information on YouTube, which I understand it also rocks, you can click subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell. You'll then be notified every time a new video drops. Be well, my friend.